of success stories of expat women. They did it, so can you. My name is Eva Sondors. I'm an inspirational singer and songwriter, and I'm also an empowerment co coach, helping women to thrive professionally after they move abroad. And I am so honored, so pleased to welcome today <laughs> Kristen, our Kristen, our fairy, and our fairy who sang with me <laughs> the song today. It's just amazing. Uh, Kristen, nice to meet you. Welcome. I'm really, really honored to welcome another artist. <laughs> A great pleasure also to know you, to meet you, Eva. I've been so much enjoying knowing you since I've met you on Facebook. Thank you very much. So let us start your story. Where are you from exactly? And uh, what brought you to Switzerland? And where do you live in Switzerland now? So starting from the beginning, I was born in South Africa, in Johannesburg, but um, didn't stay there very long, moved down to Cape Town, um, lived in Cape Town until the age of 17 years old, and then moved to Ireland with my mother and my brother. And we settled in um, Kildare, County Kildare, where I, where I continued my schooling. Schooling. So do you and have then any I Irish roots? Because when I see you, I really see a, an Irish lady. <laughs> well, I mean, my um, my grandfather on my father's side has Irish roots. Yes, uh, that's perhaps where the Celtic uh, vibes come from. It's um, even the red hair thing. My grandmother had red hair and. And my grandfather was called Patrick. <laughs> Very Irish name. <laughs> yeah. So yes, there's something there. But then on the other side, there's um, uh, Lithuania, in fact. Really? Uh, on the mother's side. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Jewish even. Wow. But, yeah. but spending okay. some time in uh, South Africa. Yes, so that was a uh, um, very beautiful place to live in the first part of my life. Um, and uh, I think uh, we were talking about nature just before. Um, the nature there really uh, carried me across. And, um, but moving to Ireland was like for me, uh, strangely, um, a, a huge relief. Uh, it was a huge relief to, to arrive in Ireland and have this feeling like I was at my place. Um, because I never really felt like I found my place in South Africa. Oh. Um, so, uh, and I immediately felt like I was um, in the right place when I arrived in Ireland. And it's hard to explain these things. But um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't need to uh, uh, search for a place there. I found it straight away. That's interesting because you were not born there. And it feels like you were not expat in Ireland, but you were expat in South Africa, actually. <laughs> Exactly. I really felt like an odd, uh, oddball there. Really, I did. I felt mm. very strange and out of place for for my childhood years. Yeah. Wow. Mm. So, mm. Uh, what changed for you when you came in Ireland, feeling feeling suddenly at your place? What changed for you? Um, it's hard to explain. I think that. Um, I think that these things are sometimes beyond words even. I mean, uh, we, could, we, we could talk about culture, we could talk about nature. It's true that when I saw the nature in Ireland, my, my heart exploded. It was just uh, so, so green and I guess the, 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 the wet aspect and something really felt like home for me there. And, and yet um, I couldn't even say that it's exactly that. And it's true that from a cultural point of view, I have absolutely 
um, no um, um, roots in Ireland on a childhood from a childhood point of view, which meant that I was a little bit of a stranger from a cultural point of view as well. So uh, it's hard to explain these things, you know, it's really hard to explain. But then um, I play Irish traditional music and that always has been a, a, a heart call for me. And I played um, the, the fiddle already and I, I joined in with the sessions in the pubs and I, I made a lot of musician friends that way. And, and I spent um, all of my young, um, my teenagehood and young adulthood playing music and singing. And that yes. was really... I know that music is really a big part of your life. So did you start to play the Irish music in South Africa? Yes, I did. Yes, I started um, at the age of 12 years old. I had a classical music background already. I'd started since very young. Mm -hmm. The piano and the viola, it's a bigger, it's a bigger violin. Yeah. So already playing classical music. And then, um, and then when I saw my first Irish music session, I fell in love completely it was like I had to play it and um, luckily the people who were playing the music there in Cape Town were very warm and welcoming to me and I felt like uh, I'd found a, a spot where I could feel like it was my place in a country where I felt like I was out of place mm. and uh, then um, uh, uh, and then at the age of 17 I'd already developed my um, uh, Irish traditional music skills to to a fair enough level, you know? And so when I arrived in Ireland, I, I really could get right in no problem. They uh, thought you were Irish. <laughs> <laughs> the moment I opened my mouth, they knew I wasn't Irish. <laughs> <laughs> but when you started to, to play the, the violin. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, uh, that's quite special, isn't it? It's strange, but I already played Irish traditional music when I arrived there, yeah. I love that very organic and natural way of connecting with people because when we are experts very often we just feel like out of place which, which was not your case and we feel like isolated and you through music and, uh, and violin immediately you could connect with people and uh, make friendships which, which is like the basics just uh, not to be alone to be to be surrounded by like-minded people so for you like music was the entrance door, which was amazing. Did you also, think? Did you mm -hmm. think at the time that you would stay in Ireland and may you make your life in Ireland? Absolutely, I thought I'd come home, you know, and uh, and I um, I developed um, my my music onwards. I went to Cork University. I studied. Um, I did a BA in music, um, both classical and traditional. Um, I could combine it, both of them. And then I moved on to Limerick, where I and I lived in Clare, uh, which is a beautiful county lost with the fairies. And I studied in Limerick, and there I studied a master's in Irish traditional music performance. And um, mm. even if I often felt um, strangely out of place on a uh, on a cult, uh, I, I want to say on a hard to say on a spoken level, you know the way people communicate and. The, as soon as I could take my violin um, and play, um, uh, I was in my element. So wow. I, I, I feel like it's sometimes people say uh, music is like a universal language that is understood by yes. everyone. It's it is. heart to heart yeah. connection immediately. And this is what we need so much heart to heart connections. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, I'm curious what brought you to Switzerland? <laughs> Oh, that's a love story oh <laughs> happens sometimes <laughs> yeah it does um yeah in fact i was at a, a, a music festival an Irish traditional music festival off the on the coast of cork um it's called the kilcrahan irish traditional music festival and it's there that i met my swiss husband it took me many years to realize that that was the the man of my life but um, uh, in 2008, I fell completely in love. It was uh, the, the deciding factor. And, uh, and then very shortly afterwards, I fell pregnant. And then I moved to Switzerland with him. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yes, uh, sometimes this is this story. We follow our heart. <laughs> we follow. <Yeah. laughs> okay. So 
Yes, so I, I'd already developed, a, I'd already, just before we leave Ireland, I'd already developed a little school of music there and I bought a house in East, in, in East Clare. Um, so I quit all of that to follow my husband to Switzerland. Wow. My music school and everything. So it was and really it was going well. <laughs> Okay, so you went into Switzerland. In Switzerland, you were already pregnant. So I think the first of your roles was being a, a mother to your kids. And what happened then? How did you did you feel immediately like at your place again, or how was it to 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 relocate no, to Switzerland? Time, this time it was quite different. It was like arriving. Um, uh, how to put it uh, I, I couldn't I couldn't understand where I was it was strange it was like I was watching my life in a film and uh, in fact the the only thing that really made sense to me at that point was was uh, finding out how to be a mother and taking care of my baby and um, figuring out because it, it, it actually came as a big shock to to realize suddenly that um, I was married I had a child a husband and uh and that i didn't speak the language french oh, wow. and mm -hmm. i didn't realize i was in shock to be honest i was just i was just watching my life as if it was a film and i wasn't in my life yes shall we say well i yeah. think it was so different from what you had known before mm -hmm. that it took quite and shock shock is a, a good word because it probably took quite a lot of time to adjust to this new condition being married uh, mm -hmm. taking care, care of a baby which is like full-time job uh, even though, even though if you have any any if you have any help it's always a huge transition transformation and you i mean you did it all relocating marrying having a kid <laughs> not speaking language which doesn't really help so how did you deal with all these with this talk, what did you do? How did you deal with it? Well, luckily, <clears throat> my husband, he was, um, he, he, he was ready to carry for a, at least a couple of years, I think for about three years, he, he, he carried the whole thing. And I just took on the role of householder and mm -hmm. baby and bit by bit, I picked up on the language. <clears throat> I listened to him speaking to other people. And I, I picked it up and also my mother in law, spent a lot of time trying to get me to um, understand what she was saying and my child started speaking in French and so that's what was um, uh, all of that meant that I, I, I learned French fairly quickly mm -hmm. and uh, so now I can understand everything I think what happened to me was five years after being in Switzerland I realized I understood everything absolutely everything yeah. and that could respond and that was really well, fantastic the language is really very helpful for integration if you want okay. really really to live in the country and to make friends you need to learn the language to understand at least and by listening and understanding uh, trying to speak uh, step by step and really in integrating integrating new culture without integrating language for me it's like it's not possible both no go absolutely together. yeah okay absolutely. so when your when your baby grew up a little bit what happened what did you what did you do well i started teaching already bit by bit um through connections in the village or or in the village next to where we lived um in the in the county of neuchatel Mm -hmm. And um, bit by bit, I I built up my body of students. Um, I was teaching. So, was, was it like very natural marketing strategy, just word of mouth? Oh, she does this. Yes. Uh, can you please? Could you uh, could you teach my son playing the fiddle, or could you teach my my daughter sing or whatever? Exactly. In fact, people came to me by word of mouth. Hang on a minute. Did I send a flyer out the first time? I might have sent a, a flyer out in two neighborhoods or three neighborhoods yeah. in the first. Uh, yeah, I think that's also how I, I got a few students was uh, just a simple little flyer. And um, <clears throat> I didn't need a lot of students at that point. I was very happy to, to teach, shall we say, two, two full afternoons a week. And then that was, you know, and that was um, for the piano, the fiddle, singing a little bit of guitar as well. And bit by bit, I, I, I advanced like that. 
um, until I think I had my second child. Yeah, yeah. And after the second child, um, uh, I did a market marketing campaign that was a little bit more important with a, a much more professional looking flyer where we sent the flyer further out to more neighborhoods. And that's where I got the main body of students. And that's where I started teaching um, uh, full afternoons most of the week. Yeah. Wow. Well, so, when you say you send the flyers, was it like door to door, um, box, mailbox to mailbox? Or how did you do it? <laughs> in fact, um, uh, there's a system in Switzerland. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it exists also in, in France. Mm -hmm. um, where you can do um, an envoi à tu maison. That's what it's called. It's, it's, it's where you can where you can ask at the post that they send the, the they they do a publicity campaign. They they it's them who distributes, but you pay. Yes, you pay for this for the service. Yes. Mm -hmm. exactly. Okay, so yes. you say I'd like all the households in this village or in this city. Uh, yeah to get exactly. this flyer and they do it for you and okay exactly. mm -hmm. yeah so you did this exactly. once for the first year yes uh, in fact um after the birth of my second child uh when she was um perhaps six months old i i sent off um the the flyers or perhaps mm -hmm. she was a little bit older yeah and so um that's where things started taking off much more and that's where i also became a bit more official and i called my my practice a little school of music and so that's where it really took off Petite école yeah. De musique. yeah i could yeah exactly and so in <laughs> fact, uh, i gave it a name i called it beau soleil because beau soleil. i had a oh, wonderful beautiful yes <laughs> école de musique beau soleil because I had a, a wonderful school of music in Cape Town where I learned um, the, 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 uh, the, the basics of all my music practice. It was also called Beau Soleil. Mm -hmm. And so um, I felt like I, uh, it had given me so much that I wanted to continue in that, mm, in that way. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, and now, in fact, I don't do any more advertising for the school of music. It just turns on its own. I have um, adults in the morning, some adults in the afternoon as well. But after school is mostly for the kids, you know, because yes. uh, that's when they can. So um, yeah, my practice is, is really it's really turning on its own now. I don't. It's really word of mouth now. And for the moment, I don't. Um, I don't necessarily look for more, even if I welcome those who come towards yeah. me. But I don't do an advertising campaign. I love this because because it it seems so organic and natural you know it seems so organic and natural <laughs> like creating all this school well of course advertising one sending uh, sending flyers and now you see uh, that it works on its own which is like effortless that's wonderful isn't it yeah it's one of the best things in my life is um obviously that's uh, my it's my activity as well. I mean, I never thought I'd be teaching so much, but life has shown me that really this is my place. And thanks to my activity, I've and because I can also do it at home and I'm not at the, the official conservatories or I can really develop my own methods that suit me very well. And um, yeah, so I'm really, really happy with that. It's, uh, it's a real gift. Yeah. Well, I mm -hmm. do believe that your method is not only efficient, but also uh, interesting and good. Because if it works on its own, if it's effortless, then people enjoy it and they come back and they, they, they spread the word. So uh, for me, definitely, uh, if I lived nearby, I would definitely send my son to your school. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely. I, also, I, I know that you are much more than just a teacher you are also an artist and a creative can you tell me a bit more about your creative project yeah in fact um i've been composing since very young i've been uh, i've been spontaneously composing and I, I can even remember the first song i composed um and i think that i didn't realize that it was so important for me until i arrived in cork where I was surrounded by people who, like me, loved composing songs. And um, that's where I really, I got home after nights of music and I started 
producing so many songs inspired by what I'd heard, what, I, what I'd seen out there in the city of Cork. And uh, th there's a very rich living tradition of singer songwriters in Ireland. Mm. And so that, um, that, really, that really helped me to see that in actual fact, uh, this part of me that's always existed has a place in the world, do you know? And so um, uh, after a while, uh, I realized that I had a, a lot of songs and I was like, well, I guess it would be a good thing to, to record them. And, uh, and I lived with this, this, this idea for so many years. And I was like, but if I don't record them, is it really the end of the world? And then I said to myself, oh, I think I would really not feel okay with myself if I don't record them, yeah. if I don't do something with them. Mm. And so um, I tried various little projects, um, but um, uh, myself and my husband agreed that the first recording needed to be a really, really good quality one if I want to yeah. really share what I have with the world. And so, and so I took it a step further. And I think that's where you may have seen me on, on Facebook, but I'm not sure. I did a, 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 a crowdfunding comp campaign for my first CD. Oh, yes, I remember, but I came after the crowd because I couldn't contribute. It was already over. But I, yes, right. okay. I probably yeah. discovered you just after the crowdfunding campaign. And I saw also because you shared some of your songs and I, I listened to your songs and I was like, oh my God, this is such a huge artist. This is a huge one, <laughs> you know, because it was like, wow. And actually, I'm not surprised when you when you say you started very young and it was a part of yourself, because what I can feel is kind of maturity in your songs not only in your music and in your voice, but also in your songs. It's not like you didn't write your first song and you put it out. It's like there is already the path that was, that was undertaken. Yeah, it's interesting because if I think about it now, I, I wouldn't ever be able to say my songs are, um, it's me. Do you know, I feel like, I feel like it's come through me and I really think that it's the way my soul communicates to me here on earth. Yeah, um, and I, uh, I think that uh, I often thought that it was perhaps um, the way that my guardian angel guides me. Because when I write a song, it's it's a reminder to myself of things greater than just this, you know, and me. Even even if everything here is just a representation of what's great, you know, in 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 the other worlds. Um, uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is that my songs help me to remember the part of me that I can't see. And also, um, there's another thing, is there also a way of, um, in French, we have a wonderful way of saying it, grande uh, grâce. It's thanking life, um, um, giving grace to, to the world is a direct English translation of grande grâce but when we say grande grâce in French it's a way of um, uh, it's, it's a way of saying thanking whereas when we say we give grace in English it's um, it doesn't have quite the same yes. meaning yes so, well what I hear is it's yeah. like music beautifies magnifies life mm -hmm. hmm. exactly exactly yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And okay, each so song... what's your project right now? So my project for the moment is um, working towards my CD release. Um, there's going to be a CD release online. Um, that's going to be the digital release. And that's the Friday 13th. Um, and so I've, I'm setting up my account online for the digital. 13th of May. Uh, yes, exactly. Friday 13th of May. A date I love. I think that um, like black cats and opening umbrellas in the house, um, <laughs> these kind of things, I really think we, oh yeah, and broken mirrors. I think we, we, we tend to be afraid of them. But in actual fact, um, I, I, see, I think that there's something hidden behind these um, phobias people have uh, yeah. uh, of, of, of these superstitions. Mm. And for example, the broken mirror is in actual fact a very positive thing. I know this has nothing to do with what we meant to be speaking about. But for example, if you break a mirror, it means that you, the, the, 
you don't need that mirror in your life anymore um you you're evolving to a different well stage. for me it's like so. going past the illusion because uh, exactly. you're in the illusion of what's visible and when you break it you can go even farther into the invisible exactly exactly mm -hmm. going beyond all the belief constructs taking steps further out of what might be quite um mat yeah. matriciel how do you say it's 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 really uh some, the matrix can be quite heavy it can hold us down i think yes. and so i think um i think it's very important sometimes to realize that everything that we come with all the all the the heavy burden of our star sign our Chinese sign, our number, our numerology, uh, uh, the astrology. numbers that <laughs> astrology, everything is an actual fact, just a pattern that that we we can actually even grow beyond, and we don't have to stick to them. Yes. So anyway, so Friday the thirteenth is my digital um, release into the world of um, of music online, Ooh. and then I will also. <laughs> Be doing a, a physical release oh, um, wow. on a Friday I the twenty. Emara, Emara, is it your is it your artistic name? How do you pronounce exactly. it? Yes, Emara. Exactly. Emara. It's, what it, does that mean? Well, in actual fact, it doesn't have a meaning as such. But if you listen to the words, M M is the French for love. M. Mm -hmm. um, so and then R Ara. There's also something of the sun in there because Ra, Ra is the sun, um, the sun god. Um, but I, in fact, I chose this name because at the time, um, everyone around me called me Emma. They didn't call me my first name. Um, my first name is Kirsten, um, which I really think is an important name for me. But at the time, I, call, I, I, I was called Emma by everyone. And it's a long story. We won't go into it. But I, I took my name. And I transformed it into Emara, and I also used numerology to find um, a number that suited me for my art and my my singing. Mm. And, uh, so that's where that's where it comes from. In fact, so. it suits you very well. It suits you just. Well. <laughs> I can see your 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 fairy um, aura with this Emara. It's just completely. Uh, Complete match for me, definitely. <laughs> Thank you, Ava. Thank you. So, it's, so uh, will be there also a physical release after the digital exactly. one? Yeah, exactly. Um, on the twentieth, on on Friday, the twentieth of April, I'm going to be um, releasing my my album physically. I will. I'll try and figure out how to sell it online. If people still want to buy CDs, I'm convinced there are people like me a little bit on the dinosaur side who <laughs> appreciate having something in their hands. Definitely. Um, <clears throat> so uh, that's that's going to be part of the program is finding um, shops that will sell it online um, as well as um, the concert. The concert is going to be the, the same date. Is there uh, any release concert? Yes, exactly. The, the, yeah. the release concert is going to going to be on the same date on Friday, the 20th of May. And um, it's it's going to be in the Val de Travers uh, in a wonderful chapel with the beautiful acoustic um, that I came across. Chapel uh, Val de Travers. Okay. Cha Chapel au concert. It's called Chapel au concert. Val de Travers à Couve. The little town is called Couve. C O U V. Which canton is it? It's also Neuchâtel. Neuchâtel, okay. Right. What, what time does it start? At 7.30 in the evening, 19.30. Is it necessary to book? It's nice to book, yes. Um, if people want to book, uh, it's good if we they will send put me the link. Email. We will put the link. I always create um, an introduction and, and we will put the link. So they, right yeah they yeah if they do. want to if they want to just tell me that they're coming like that i can have an idea of the numbers of people mm -hmm. there are 150 seats available so i'm not worried that there'll be too many people okay. but it's very nice if people can tell me if they're coming okay and yeah we'll ask them. Wonderful. like that uh, it's, it's more a question of I'm, I'm wondering if i will serve a little a little aperitif mm -hmm. after the concert <laughs> 
Well, that can little... be an opportunity to meet each other. It's always very lovely just to, 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 to remain a little bit under exchange and form a create connections, create friendships, especially for expats. Sometimes it's a, a bit hard. So that's an opportunity, an amazing opportunity to meet Emara, <laughs> Kirsten, and also to, to have a lovely time. And I am sure you will love your music. It's so beautiful. She has a beautiful, pure, crystal clear voice. Um, and her music universe is full of sensitivity, lovely connection to nature. I mean, it's just if you love nature, if you love uh, being outdoors, if you if you love uh, beautiful, pure and uh, very sensitive things, you will just love her music and her concert. Kirsten, I have the last one question for you. It's always the same for everyone. What would you suggest to women who have moved abroad recently and who meet hardship, obstacles, rejections, um, this kind of, sh of shock, as you said, what would you suggest them how they can get past of it, past it? I think the very first thing to do is believe in oneself, believe mm. in oneself. Um, uh, create um, create systems for oneself to to um, remind uh, remind ourselves that we have everything we need. Whether it's writing, whether it's creating a list of of resolutions, the things that we want to um, uh, create for ourselves in our lives, and then from there, once you've created the, this list of why you believe in yourself, the worth that you give yourself then there the work to start trusting this is every day always rereading meditating on that even just five minutes a day and then after that um i think it's very very important to follow one's enthusiasm enthusiasm is a, a very important word because um in fact it means uh, in god i'm not religious uh but i find it a beautiful word on tous uh, enthusiasm in actual fact means that we are on our way we are following our way and so I really believe that by following our enthusiasm we um, we create the passage towards our personal success mm. uh, and so I think that's very important which is also uh, another way of saying follow where your joy is I think that's also important um, and our joy can be found in small things and big things. And each one knows intimately where their own joy is. And I think one of the hardest things in this world that I would also um, uh, uh, say for women is it's very important to stay focused. Stay focused and don't allow yourselves to be um, distracted by everyone else's story. Um, so the important thing is to focus on enthusiasm, connect with others who, who have that similar enthusiasm to you, and then stay focused and keep creating that, that thing that gives you joy every day. Wow, um, thank you very much for sharing your wisdom, your experience, uh, your tips and tools. I'm so, so, so honored you are here today with us um maybe we will meet one day for a concert or for, <laughs> for another, well, I, think another. We'll meet. I don't know why but i'm pretty sure we're going to meet in person ava yes. i just have when the, the moment is right it will happen yes I'm exactly sure. yes. Uh, you are watching success stories of expat women series i'm eva sondors and if you feel today like oh life is heavy difficult i don't know how to do it how, how to go about the, all this stuff i just feel so low please ask for help reach to me i offer you 45 minutes free clarity session where we will see where you are today and we will transform all little well maybe not all <laughs> but your <laughs> in adults and fears into very concrete steps you can undertake in order to start to create this thriving professional life in Switzerland. Remember, you were born to thrive. <laughs>